you need to have it. We'd like to welcome you to our Good Friday service. I realize that's a bit of an oxymoron. Why do we call the death of our Savior good? But if you think of it this way, if he doesn't die, you have no hope of heaven because sin has not been paid for. So that makes it good. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand and sing with me?
gave his life for me on a hill called Calvary. But there's something else I'd really like to know. Does he still feel the pain? Tonight, you have got a card. Hopefully, if anybody doesn't have a card, raise your hand and somebody can uh, go get you a card that's on the table. But 
the cards during the sermon tonight, we're going to be talking about the cross and what the cross means for each one of us. And during the service tonight, I want you to write down any of your cares, the trials you're going through, the things you're struggling through tonight. And at the end of the service, we're going to take these cards up to the front and nail them to the cross and leave them there. All your troubles, all your worries, all the things that you've been struggling with today, last week, what you're going to struggle with tomorrow, bring them all up and put them in the hands of the Lord. Amen? We'll be doing that later. So during the course of the evening, write those down, keep them with you, and we will be coming up to do those later. Because Easter speaks about the crucifixion. Good Friday speaks of the crucifixion. And it's all about the cross today. The cross that is, there's hope in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You know, we see, we see crosses all over the place. We see them at the hospitals. We see them in churches. We have three of them up tonight. We see crosses all over the place. We see them as we drive down the highway. You'll see a cross beside the road. And you'll see flowers and different things there. And I got asked this question a couple of weeks ago that just really hit home. When people wear crosses today, or they have a cross out beside the road, what is that cross representing? Is, has it become an idol? which we think the cross is, is the, the, the physical cross or the cross that we wear around our neck or the things we hang up in the hospital, has that become an idol to us? And we think that maybe the cross is what we're, we're worshiping, is that just that, that, that wood or that metal that we're wearing around our, or, or, the, or whatever we're putting beside the highway to represent that people had passed away at that one location, maybe a wreck or something that had killed somebody. Is that becoming an idol to us? I had that question asked to me. And I had to stop a minute and think about that. Do we take things and turn them into an idol? Or do you really know what the cross means as the center of our faith? The center of our faith. Jesus Christ conquered death by going to the cross. He had to do that for each one of us. That cross represents the death of Jesus Christ because it also means that not only is he on the cross, we, we talked about that again tonight. Sometimes you'll see, even in, in, in hospitals in different places, you'll see the cross with, with Jesus hanging on it. Jesus is not on the cross anymore. Amen? He's, Amen. he's dead and risen. Of course, we're not going to talk about the resurrection tonight, but he's risen. There's no need to have him on a cross. The cross represents what he did for us. He died for us. Now, let me, let me, let me take you back about 92 days. Can you remember back 92 days ago? What happened 92 days ago? That was January 1st, 2023. And we had church service in here, and, and we spoke about resolutions. What was your resolution for 2023? What did you put down, and you probably already broke your resolution, but what did you put down? Now, if you remember the sermon, I'm not gonna test you to see if you remember the sermon, but if you remember the sermon, we talked about committing ourselves to forget about our past and look forward to the new year. We committed to look at that new year as a new beginning for us. We committed that day to look, look to ourselves for tomorrow, the future. And we committed ourselves to stand firm. But in all the resolutions you made on January 1st, 92 days ago, was Christ and the cross the center of your decision of what your resolution was going to be for 2023? Or not? Even if we decided we were going to get eat healthy and exercise, oh, a horrible thing, isn't it? 
But was that in the center of your, uh, was, was the cross in the center of what your decisions were made? The cross. What was the original cross that Jesus died on? What was it made of? What was it made of? The tree that was made, that it was made out of, all my research, I have not found exactly what people think it was. They, they think it could have been dogwood. It could have been cypress. It could have been pine. It could have been olive. It could have been a mixture of all of them because some of them have a little bit uh, firmer texture or whatever you call it to the wood. And so maybe that's what they put for, for putting Jesus' feet on. But there's nothing that really says this is what the wood that was used. So we don't really know. But we're going to talk about this cross tonight. Now, there's a research that was done by uh, Barna. It's a Barna research. Anybody ever heard of Barna? I haven't. But, but he research, he did his group did this research, and they found that more than half of all adults, probably about 54 percent, believe that if a person is generally good or does enough good things for others, they have earned their place in heaven. Interesting. 51% of Christians, or maybe even 54% of non-Christians, believe that no matter how they feel about money, money is still the number one thing for success in life. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? And that a proportion of a lot of even households that believe in Jesus and tithe don't necessarily give their tithe. Less than 10% of Christians give money to the church to further the ministry. Interesting. And then in 2005, it said that 34% of the uh, adults that were that were um, uh, surveyed said that that they thought it was the pers a personal responsibility to share Christ with others around them. Only 54%. Shouldn't we be sharing Jesus with those around us? Shouldn't we? Even through our life, shouldn't we be sharing Christ? The, cry, the cross tonight is not, I repeat, the cross tonight is not just a symbol that connects Christians together. It's not just two pieces of wood that were just put together. The cross is not just a form that the Romans used to kill people. The cross is not a basic doctrine that young Christians must learn in order to get a, a deeper, deeper into their faith. It's not just that. It's the center of everyone on earth. It should be the center of all that we do here on earth. It's our past. It's our present. The cross is also our future. The cross should be the center of all of our lives today, all of our decisions, all of the, the things that we've made resolutions for. The cross should be the center of all that. The cross should be the center. The cross is the center of our faith. The cross should be the center of our faith. Not just the starting point of our faith, or not just the ending part of our faith, but it should be central of our faith. What we believe in Christ tonight should be dealt with through the, through the cross. It's our faith. It's the center of our faith. And it's, it's tragic that a lot of people, even Christians, don't really understand what the cross is all about. Now we all, we, we, we read the scriptures and we know that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for us. But do we really look at the cross and what it meant? And the blood, we, we saw the passion of the Christ a couple of Sundays ago. And, and, and it always gets to me when, when they're putting Jesus on the cross and they've got him laid down and they hammer those spikes into his hands and his feet. How tragic. And then they bring the cross up and put it down in the hole and you see the blood running down the cross. The cross has a big big uh, symbol for us, isn't it? It should be the center of our life. Martin Luther says, I'm quoting Martin Luther, he says, in other words, 
What the heart is to the body, the cross is to our faith. What the foundation is to the building, the cross is to Christian thought and practice. Lay this doctrine crooked and our faith will be like the leaning tower of Pisa. First Corinthians 2, he says, he says, when I when I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence and superior wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony of God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except it's about Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the uh, Spirit's power, so that your faith, so that your faith might rest in men's wisdom, not in, not in men's wisdom, but in God's power. I think Martin Luther kind of had it down, didn't he? I think he understood what the, what the cross was all about. It's about Christ and Him crucified. The cross is the center of our faith. So why not put him the center of our lives? Why don't we put Christ the center of our life? Without Christ dying on the cross for us, there will be no Christianity. Without Jesus dying on the cross, there's no hope of eternity. Without Jesus Christ dying on the cross, there's no reason for us to come and worship. Without Jesus dying on the cross, there is nothing but emptiness. It's not, it, it should be the center, the cross should be the center of our lives, not just worship. Amen. Amen. We also know that the cross is the center of our future. The center of our future. Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins to secure our future in heaven. Amen. The cross is at the center of all our futures. The entire mankind. Because you see, you either believe in Christ as your Savior. And you believe that the cross is where Jesus died and shed his blood for each one of us. And took on all the sin of all of earth. And you accept Jesus Christ into your life. Or you don't. Maybe your choice is not to accept this. And if so, the cross is still the future for all mankind. Amen? Amen? It is. It should be the center of all of what we do and all, we, all the decision we make. If you know Jesus and know him crucified, then he knows you. And you know that heaven is in store for each of us. John, John 10, starting in verse uh, 7, it says, Therefore Jesus said unto them, Verily I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate, Jesus says. Whoever enters with me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. A hired hand is not a shepherd and does not know, own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters. The man runs away because... He is just a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I know the sheep knows me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I lay down my life for my sheep. Aren't you glad of that? That Jesus, even on, even on this Good Friday or the day that Jesus was crucified on the cross for us, He did it for each one of us. Aren't you glad of that? That Jesus Christ knows us and did that for me. He did it for me and you. He came and laid down his life for us. The future that we have is the hope of eternal life with him. Death on the cross is our future. Without the cross, without that cross, 
We are lost. We're alone. We're separated from God. We're enemies of God. Without hope. Without a future. We're doomed to suffer. We're doomed to fail. We're abandoned. And we're all on our own. What a tragic time that would be. The cross is also the center of God's favor. In God's favor. In Colossians it says... For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and by Him it to reconcile all things to Himself by Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross. The cross of Christ is right in the center of God's favor for us. All nailed to the cross. All these things that we are going to write down on our cards, Nail them to the cross and leave them there. Never to remember them again. Because, you know, Jesus has died for you. And he loves you. And he cares about you. In Colossians 1 it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave all of your sins. Amen. He forgave all of your sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it all away by nailing it to the cross. Our sins are gone. Jesus took them upon himself, and he was nailed to the cross with our sins. You remember when in the scripture, and it, you saw in the Passion of the Christ even, where when Jesus was on there, even God, his father, could not look upon him because of the sin that Christ had, had taken upon himself. That sin was us. He took that on himself. And even God could not look upon him. And the, the, the whole earth went dark. Went dark because there was no light there. Tonight we all have a chance to take all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our sins that we may be still carrying and write them down and nail them to that cross and leave them there tonight. Leave it there never to pick it up again. Now when you nail that to, to the cr cross tonight, I will tell you that nobody will look at those. You don't need to put your name because it's only between, be, between you and the Lord. You don't need to write anything down. Nobody's going to come and say, hey, I saw what you wrote on that card. Nobody's going nobody's to look at those. After the weekend's gone, they will be burned. But you're going to leave that on the cross for Jesus to take all those cares. Jesus fulfilled the law by, na by being nailed to the cross. Good Friday. Kind of strange we call it Good Friday. But it was because Jesus Christ died for us. He loved us so much. He loved us so much. He died for us. What are you putting and nailing to the cross tonight? Where are you at in your spiritual walk tonight? Have you given it all to Him? Have you given Him every part of your being? Everything you do, your whole life revolves around the cross. All your decisions are made by looking to the cross. I hope they are. So tonight as we as we come up and nail our trials and our temptations and our and our things on the cross tonight, I want you to come up and in no particular order, just come up and there'll be a couple of guys helping you with the nails and nail them to the cross. And then tonight, after we get through, we'll pick up a communion cup, take them back to your seat, and hold them until we all take communion together. Okay, so come up, get the uh, get the nails, get the nails, hammer them in. What an impact this! I don't know if you, when you go back and sit back at your chair, I've I do the video in, and I hear as I do the video in the last couple of years of when we've been doing this, you can hear the banging of the nails going into the wood, and you hear the silence. So take this. And remember what God has done for you and what Christ has done for you. Gentlemen, would you come up as we prepare for this?
Let us pray over the elements. Gracious Heavenly Father, we gather tonight to nail all of our cares and our worries and our trials that we're going through and let you take control of those. We'll nail those to the cross to never look back and see them because we know we are in the center of your hands, that you, you care a lot about us and you love us. And also we, we do this communion tonight and I pray God that your spirit would anoint us as we go out from here and preach the good news and we live in the hope of your second coming. Lord, we'll, as we take this communion tonight, may, may uh, you help us to remember the body of Christ that suffered and bled and died for us and was resurrected. Pour out your spirit on us and these gifts. Make these elements by the power of your Holy Spirit, the body and the blood of Christ, that we may go out into the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Amen. You may get up and come as you will. the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathan, that is, my God, my God, have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, said, this man is calling to Elijah. Immediately, one of those ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, praise the Lord. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, truly, this was the Son of God.
take and he brought it to the third. How was that? Was that kind of a interesting question? Thank you, Lord. Tonight as we take communion, we read from 1 Corinthians 11 that says, And the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is the body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat, and be thankful. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take, drink, and be thankful. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, that by your Spirit we are all one in Christ. We're all one with each other and one in the ministry of, of Jesus to all the world until Christ comes again in that final victory. Lord, the cross was actually a victory over death. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let's stand together as we close this service tonight. Thank you all for coming out tonight to this Good Friday service. And I want to close with singing the old rugged cross. We know that, don't we?
Don't take those back up again. Leave them there tonight. Leave here knowing that you've given those over to the Lord. Never to pick them up again. It's in His hands to solve our issues. Amen? It's Him. Never for us to pick it up again. Don't let Satan tell you any different. You've left that at the cross tonight. Amen? Wow, I see that. Okay, I'm a little more emotional than most. But I look at that thinking, thank you, Lord, for that opportunity we have. Thank you as you go from here tonight. May God bless you and give you the peace as you leave here tonight knowing that Jesus Christ died on that cross for you. He loves you. Amen? Amen. You are dismissed.